1420 and ESPN 1420.com. Jay Walker, Bird's Eye View. We welcome to the show Dr. Brian Maggard. As I said, we already planned to have Dr. Maggard on today. Um, and then, you know, coincidentally, there were some issues that happened. And I contacted him today and I said, guess what? The, uh, the topic has kind of changed a little bit. And Dr. Maggard said, I got no problem with that. So he's here. Welcome in. And uh, thank you for coming by. Thank you for having me and good afternoon. Okay. You know, you've been on the, you've been on the job now about two months. And now you have really, a, you, I know that things that you have done have been important things I, as far as, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But now you're dealing with maybe the most public decision and the most public process you've had to go through since becoming an athletic director. Now, I'm going to ask you, first of all, you were an associate AD forever, uh, and you spent 21 years at Missouri. During that time, did you personally have to deal with stuff like this? Oh, absolutely. You know, so this Missouri, ain't your first rodeo. No, it's not. And, uh, you know, the difference would be at the end of the day, you know, the buck would have stopped with somebody else. But right. I have been very, uh, for good or bad, very well versed, you know, in student athlete conduct issues, crisis management, things of that nature. And so, no, is this, you know, is this a disappointing situation? Absolutely. Or, you know, am I sorry about it? Absolutely. Uh, is our head football coach sorry about it? No question. Nobody is more frustrated, more disappointed than that guy. And, uh, but, but no, this is not the first rodeo. And uh, this is a situation. It's a student athlete conduct issue. That's the bottom line. There's a legal process that will work its way through. We'll be very respectful of that. We have our departmental policies that we implement as well, but certainly we'll be respectful of the legal process. And you know what? I, I think you just hit on something that, that a, a lot of folks confuse. There's a judicial process. There is also a policy when it comes to student-athlete conduct. The two are not always mutually inclusive. When, when a situation comes up like this, Help, help us understand the process that you all go through to get to the point where you are, let's say, today. Right. Well, so in its most simple forms, if we have a student athlete who's arrested, um, then that kicks in immediate indefinite suspension. And that suspension will stay intact until myself or my designee and, and the head coach can get together and, and talk about it. Uh, we usually do get some type of information, you know, from law enforcement to help us make a, a good decision on what we need to do moving forward. But in this particular situation, you know, we have 13 young men who were uh, arrested and charged with a felony, uh, conspiracy to commit felony theft. And that absolutely kicked in our indefinite suspension policy. And that will stay intact until we know more about the outcomes, you know, of this particular situation. In the meantime, I would imagine that you've been on the phone more than once with more than one person trying to discern and, and collect as much information as you possibly can. I am not so naive as to suggest that you're going to share any of that because no. it's, a, it's a student. I, I mean, I understand right. student athlete privacy issues. I get it. Yeah. OK, and, and, and I'm not going to ask you to violate that. I would never do that. You do understand that when something like this happens, when you have, the, when the word arrest, when the police are involved, that there's a certain, um, a certain perception that people immediately get. And it gets fueled a lot by social media. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with this. You don't know what's going to happen with this. I've already made a prediction as what's going to happen with this, but you weren't in the room at the time. Um, as you, as you do your own investigation, because I've got to believe you're doing one separate from the police investigation. Is that right? Well, I don't know if I'd call it an investigation, but we're certainly um, accepting, you know, the information that law enforcement is able and willing to give to us, right? And then that helps us continue just to monitor the process. In a situation like this, Jay, this is all you can do. The next right thing. When we were informed that these young men were going to be arrested and charged, then we did the next right thing, and that's implement our indefinite suspension policy. Now, is that a policy that you have put in since you've become an athletic director, or is that a policy that was already in place when you got here? It was in place when I got here, and it's one very similar to what we operated under at the University of Missouri. Would, would it be 
would it be fair to say that that's at most university standing operating standard operating procedure? I yeah. think I, I would not surprise me if that is the case. You know, I think anytime uh, you know in our industry when we have a young man or young woman arrested, you know, then some type of suspension kicks in. Um, you know, what you want to do is you always want to be uh, respectful of the legal process. You never want to do anything that would hamper that, that would be perceived as, um, you know, trying to impede or, or do anything that would be construed as trying to intervene. You, you take the information that you get from law enforcement um, and, and then you apply your respective policy in place. And that's what we've done here. It's, again, this is a student athlete conduct issue that we have policies in place internally that we will implement. The legal system has their policies in place. It starts with a warrant or a charge, a warrant, an arrest, booking, processing, all that kind of stuff. And so they have their policy they're following. We have ours. We are being, you know, I think kept in the loop the best as we can to, to know what's going on there. And we will be very, very respectful of their process. What? There are some situations that have come up in the last year or so. You had the, the 13 arrests last night. Just uh, about a month ago, you had a player who was dismissed from the football team who was charged with, with a felony. Um, and, and the type of felony that I think gets you a lot of really, really bad publicity uh, if it gets out. And then there was an issue um, during the presidential uh, election where there was a video that was leaked. I think there is a perception on the part of some that would say, is there is there a lack of control here? Is this department, specifically the football staff, do they have things under control? In your opinion, do they? I do. Uh, that's not a concern of mine right now whatsoever. And Coach Hutchbeth and I have had a lot of conversations, you know, since noon yesterday or whatever time, you know, we found out uh, up until now. Um, I don't. You know, this is, I want to make this clear, this is not a personnel issue. It's a student conduct issue that we're dealing with, we're handling, we'll work as we need to with the uh, respective law enforcement agency, and, and we'll learn from it and we'll move forward uh, again. On behalf of the athletic department, the football program, I absolutely apologize to Cajun Nation. I apologize to the university, to the Acadiana region. This is not the type of conduct that anybody in our organization wants reflected from our student athletes. Be clear about that. Uh, young people make mistakes. You know, as I, I shared with uh, uh, our staff this morning uh, during a full staff meeting, I just kind of did a, a summary of, of what transpired from really last night to this morning is, you know, we all need to be mindful. Our logo never comes off. It never comes off. And so we do have the God-given ability to choose our own actions. But when we do that, we don't have the ability to choose the consequences of those actions. And whether you're a young adult or an old adult, you know, people made mistakes. These young men made a mistake. They got it. I know they understand. I know they're remorseful. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we have to be very mindful you know, that we are in a spotlight, particularly in college athletics. Uh, we have to be mindful that right or wrong, I believe we're held to a higher standard. I am as an athletics director. Our coaches are as coaches, our staff, our student athletes. And um, we just have to make sure, you know, that we're continuing to reiterate that message to our kids. I know that Coach Hutchbeth and his staff, since I've been here, are very diligent about trying to educate, guide, and develop young men. I don't have any concerns about that whatsoever. 13 individuals made a bad decision. There are consequences to those actions, to that decision, and we will let a process play out to see how things turn out. There are some that uh, don't wait for the process. This has been a heavily publicized story. It was publicized not only by local media, it's gone viral. It was reported on ESPN. It was reported by TMZ. It was reported by Yahoo Sports among others. Obviously, you would prefer to not get that kind of publicity. Let me ask you this. Is the, has the media been fair here? Because we don't know what the situation is. Let's suppose that 
now that we know, because it was uh, reported uh, within the last hour of exactly the kind of merchandise we're talking about, some Jordan shoes, um, a training ladder, uh, four and a half pairs of socks and three dollars in cash. Let's suppose that from a judicial standpoint, most or all of this goes away. You know the media is not going to, Yahoo Sports is not going to say, Raging Cajun athlete, the student athletes cleared. You know that TMZ is not going to report that. Locally, they may. Is, 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 the, process, is the process fair as it stands? Well, I think your example is, I mean, that's, that's a historical approach you know, to, to news reporting. And I'm not saying, you know, that's a knock on media by any means. It's just that, uh, you know, these things have a shelf life. You and I both know that, right? And, and they flare up and they, and they come on strong and then they kind of seem to tamper down. And then if new information comes out, they'll flare up again. Uh, and obviously more times than not, you know, if there is a good ending to a story, it is seldom reported and followed up on. You know, I can't control that, um, but that's always the outcome we want, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what's important. If it gets out there, if it doesn't, you know, I cannot control that. Our athletics department can't control that. We want the good outcome. We want it for the sake of the individuals involved. We want it for the sake of the institution, our athletics program, et cetera. But, um, you know, candidly, I, I don't get too caught up in whether it, uh, you know, gets reported at the end in a good story. I, I just can't. I would be wasting my time and probably getting frustrated. I, I yeah, I understand that. Um, have you, um, have you ever gone in your couch and found $3 in cash and four and a half pairs of socks? And, and if so, did your couch get arrested? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just asking. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think I found two dollars and one pair of socks. Oh, okay. Time. Oh, well, that's a misdemeanor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's always, I think, on the part of the public, an idea. You said that there are consequences for the decisions that are made. There are consequences for actions that are made. Does the university or do you have a certain policy that says, okay, let's suppose all of this goes away. You still put yourself in a position where, I think I use the term personal shame upon the program. Is that then up to the individual coaches to decide what those consequences are? How involved will you be in that? I'll be very involved. I mean, that's something that Coach and I have already started to talk about. So, again, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But at the end of the day, you know, we know, the young men know, that they made a bad choice, okay? However the legal system runs its course and whatever the outcome is, um, you know, let's just say for whatever reasons, either charges are minimize or they're completely dropped. That's that's not for me to say, but regardless of what that is, yeah, there's a, there's a conduct aspect to this. And we have standards, we have expectations for our young men or young women, our staff included. And uh, we would then sit down and determine, you know, what our internal consequences will be. Because at the end of the day, you know, they did something wrong and something that brought discredit to our football program, to our athletic department, to our institution. Dr. Brian Maggot is uh, is our guest, and and I think you've answered the most pertinent questions. I, I you know we've only got a few minutes, and I honestly expected to talk to you about other stuff today. One of the things that you said that you were going to do is get into the outlying areas, shake yes. people's hands, yes. talk to folks. You didn't care if it was a group of two, that you had a story to tell about raging Cajun athletics. You wanted to be able to tell. You've been to Acadia Parish. Last week, uh, the as I referred to it, the Brian Maggard Traveling Roadshow, uh, went to St. Landry Parish. You were in Opelousas and in Eunice. Um, d- d- tell, tell us about it. Tell us about what it was like. You know, those are some of my uh, best days. I, I just really enjoy getting out. One, just seeing the, the country, the, lands, the landscape, and the territory. Really enjoy just meeting with the different people. You know, people running the age gamut or the age, yeah. The, the, uh, the gamuts of age, um, you know, whether I'm talking to an economic development board or a rotary club, or we're sitting at a sports bar, you know, with, a, you know, 15, 20 people, um, again, just getting to know them and me getting to, to know them, getting to know me and me getting to know them. 
it's just a really enjoyable time, you know, where I get to get out. And this isn't about me talking about Brian Maggard. It's about me, again, telling about UL and UL athletics as well as uh, answering questions and just engaging. And that's what I want to do. I just want to engage with people and uh, make sure that, uh, you know, they really understand what it is we're about. Are there any particular questions that you found interesting in the two places that you've gone so far that 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 maybe you weren't expecting that 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 you may or may not be able to share with us? Uh, not really. I mean, the, the questions are fairly common. You know, it's um, you know about vision, uh, goals, short term, long term. It's about uh, you know um, how maybe the RCAF works or how can how can we get involved? How can we contribute? Um, so no, nothing I think out of the ordinary at all. But uh, the people have been fantastic. You know, we have uh, I think it's six more parishes to visit. We should be done by June seventh, and uh, but I, I really look forward to those days because that's where you can just kind of get out uh, again, see the uh, see the region and engage. Speaking of the RCAF, they're doing um, they're doing a fundraiser right now with baseball called the Home Run Challenge. Uh, you donate a a hundred dollars and. When you get to a certain point, uh, it kicks in where you've got folks who have said, okay, when you get to this level, I'll match it. And the goal, I think, is what, a half million dollars? Is that right? Uh, yes. Um, and, and I understand that uh, since it's all baseball related, you've reached first base. We have a rounding first, heading to second, I there, believe. There, there, there you are. That? Sounds like a meatloaf <laughs> song to me. Um, and, you know, and, and hopefully you, you get all the way um, around to home plate. Is this, has it worked? Is it going to, according to what you guys envisioned it to be? I believe so. You know, it's, uh, it's a situation where, you know, I think this gives an opportunity for, for anyone to uh, participate in helping, you know, with the building of that stadium. And uh, I think people are having fun with it. I think it's, uh, it's a concept that uh, allows, you know, people from all walks of life to kind of engage and, and be a part of and embrace. And so, no, I think it's going uh, quite well. And I applaud the ideal. I, uh, of course, we were planning to play baseball this evening, and I was actually planning to go ahead and uh, and go ahead and make my own personal contribution tonight. I'll do that. Uh, gosh, the next home game, whenever we get to play at home again. Okay. Um, but it is um, it's something that, uh, and for folks that aren't totally aware of it, anyone who contributes, uh, there will be a, a huge sign at Russo Park next year where everyone who met the home run challenge uh, will have their names during the 2018 season. Uh, portrayed. Yes. And uh, so that's, you know, what do I get for my money? That's what you get. You get your name up on the wall and, and, a, and a, an attaboy and a thank you very much. And and look, uh, th that way you can go there and find out whose names aren't on there. It's really a lot of fun <laughs> when you um, when you when you get right down to it. Um, OK, uh, we've only got a couple of minutes left. I've gotten the impression from conversations that I've had with you, not necessarily on the air, from talking with your staff whether it be uh, Rob Stewart or John Duga or Matt Casbon or anybody else, mm -hmm. that what you've been doing since you've got here has been finding out how business has been done here, try to look at better ways to organize and, and to try to get that part of it structurally set up. Is, is that accurate? Has that been the biggest part of what you've yeah, done? Yeah, that's, that's very accurate. You know, that's kind of the the day job aspect of, of, of what your first, you know, 90 to 100 days are going to entail. On top of that, then you're trying to do the external things as well, you know, the engagement piece. Uh, then obviously, you know, you got to you got to battle with the hiccups that come your way. Um, I've got football scheduling I'm trying to deal with, you know, future football scheduling. So yes, but to your point, those are, you know, maybe the foundational things you know, that I've been working on while also, you know, trying to balance. It's funny, you, you mentioned I was on the phone yesterday morning with a good friend of mine, John Gilbert. He's a new athletic director over at Southern Miss. And he had called me just to touch base and check in. And, uh, and uh, we were just, we were both saying the biggest challenge right now is just the balancing act. So how's your balance? My equilibrium is good right now. But you know, I'm, I'm I'm on a strong, solid chair here with you, and uh, but no, it's it's going well. Have it you? Well. I, I, and and I just want to confirm because somebody told me this. You've gone ahead and taken your sports, and you've taken your executive staff, or the, mm -hmm. it, I think that's what you senior call leadership. It. Your senior leadership team. That's yes, it. And you've basically taken sports and put put various yes. members of your leadership team. 
kind of in charge of those sports yes. and the coaches report to them. They report to you. Yes. Um, I get the impression that that's done at most universities. Yeah, it, it's what we'd call sport program administration. And so it would not be an uncommon model at all. You know, it's certainly at this level. It'd be, I'd be doing our head coaches and myself a great injustice if I was trying to be, you know, their point of contact. Well, you, know, you, all the you time. mean you mean you don't yeah. do everything all by yourself? I certainly do not. You would not want me to do it by myself. <laughs> I'm very good at the things I'm supposed to do. But um, no, so we, you know, we have several members of that leadership team uh, have different sport assignments. But as I told my head coaches, you know, if I'm not your sport administrator, right, you always have a direct line to me. You know, regardless, this is just really helps me do a better job of utilizing an organizational structure that allows me to delegate, but to ensure that you as a head coach are getting the one-on-one -on -one attention you need on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that, uh, that a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, there was a, a, an issue that the baseball team had um, that nobody was prepared for. I mean, from the standpoint of no one was expecting, I guess, that, you know, there were a lot of decisions that had to be made on the fly. And uh, I know that you were contacted and the first thing out of your mouth was um, do what you got to do for your student athletes and we'll worry about the rest of it later. Now, there, now that rest of it later is money. <laughs> OK, because <laughs> because if you're going to go ahead and suddenly have to get uh, get a bus to come and get you and go to Jacksonville and then spend an, yes. an unforeseen night in Metairie. we're not even talking about missed class time here. That there's, you know, it, it's, so how did you do about worrying about it later? Because there was yeah. a considerable cost involved there. There was, but I, at the end of the day, you know, I I know that Coach Robe and his staff, they're, they're fantastic managers, you know, of their budget. And so um, we're going to be okay there. All right. It, it, yep. it, you know, it's not going to have to come out of Robe's salary of day, or anything At the end like of the day, that. we got to get them back, you know, whether it costs <laughs> a little or a lot. We got to get them back. And there's how? nobody more... Um, uh, more efficient with how he does things in Coach Robe. All right, you. Uh, what happened from a student athlete standpoint? They were out, they knew they were going to be out of class Thursday and Friday uh, because they had to travel to Coastal yes, Carolina. Correct. They left on correct. Thursday, played correct. on Friday. The plan was for them to be uh, in class eight o'clock Monday morning, even though they might not get back to the dorm till two a.m. Exactly. Uh, you know, there's there's no slack. But as it turned out now, they missed Monday and Tuesday classes as well. So the student athletes missed four days of class. Right. Is that something that you have to get involved with as far as helping to contact professors and stuff just so they understand what was going on here? I do not. So Christy Alford, who heads up our academic support services, she and her team handle that solely and do a fantastic job with it. They have their relationships with. And it's, it's, but it's like Coach Rove said at his radio show, and I really I love this when he said it. You know, it's unfortunate that that situation occurred, but if you're taking care of business as a student, you know, leading up to then, you, you should be okay. Your instructors are going to work with you. So those who, you know, miss a lot of class leading up to that, and then, oh, by the way, we had this travel snafu, and I have to miss more class. That's when it gets a little bit sticky. By the way, uh, Danica with the RCAF yes. just texted me and said, where's your contribution? And I'm just telling you, she's welcome to come by here. She can personally pick it up from me. I'll give it to her. Right now, if she wants to come by. In pennies. In pennies, right? Uh, no, no. I appreciate you coming by, uh, especially since we had to kind of uh, shift uh, the topics sure. for today. And hopefully we'll do it again very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank Dr. you, Br Dr. Brian Maggard, stick around. Sports.